How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Rick. I'm an HVACR technician, which is heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration. I also do gas generators. That's the reason why All Power's reached out to me because I've done a review in the past on a portable power station and they also seen some of my repair videos. So if you're interested in checking those out, make sure you check out the links at the end of this video. What we have here today is the All Power's model R4000 portable power station. It features 3,600 watts of capacity and 3,600 watt hours with a peak capacity of 6,000 watts. This power station also features a 30 amp RV plug here on the front, 420 volt outlets that are rated at 20 amps a piece, a 12 volt 10 amp car plug on the front. It also features four USB-A ports there rated at 18 and 12 watts a piece. And it also features 200 watt USB-C ports for quick charging for your computers or phones. This particular model was provided by All Powers to do the review on under the understanding that I would give them my fair, honest review. And they said that was fine, so that's what we're doing today. They also sent me a 400 watt solar panel system to charge this or any of your power stations that would benefit from solar panels. All Powers also provided me a discount link that I'll be putting down in the description down below. If you click on that link, it also helps support the channel and you still get the better deal without paying anything extra. I recorded over two hours of testing of this portable power station. I tested it by running my whole house with it and gave it a hard load test with the microwave, with the furnace running. Now with a generator this big, you're gonna need something to load it up with. I'm not real big into resistive load testing only, which I did do a 1200 watt heater on this, but resistive load is only some of it. Now you actually have three types of loads out there. You have capacitive, resistive, and inductive loads. That's the reason why I tested this out on the whole house. That way you'd have a combination of all those. That goes into something called power factor. Closer to one that your power factor is, the more efficient your generator is gonna run. So I did more of a real life test on this. What I did do is I tied L1 and L2 together at my breaker panel with an isolated transfer switch so that it was broke from the utility power and I was able to power all my 120 volt outlets. I do have some 230 volt outlets which they do offer a 230 volt machine but this here is a 120 volt so I was not able to test it on the water heater or the well. Let's go ahead and get started with some of my footage that I ran. I'm gonna show you the actual amperage and voltage that I measured on the solar panels. I'm also going to to demonstrate the device running the whole house. And I'm also gonna show you how the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi work on this also. It also has available voice commands. Mm -hmm. We finally got a day now where we have enough sunlight that I'm able to test the solar cells. As you can see, the sun is really beating down. Right now, it is exactly 2.30 in the afternoon. What I'm doing right now is I'm trying to run the battery down a little bit so that we can charge it. Uh, it's been charged at 100%. I've been waiting for a good day to do the review on this. We're gonna go ahead and carry it out there. It does have two handles here on the top so that you can grab right a hold of it. It does have wheels on the back, which makes it easy for transporting. They do have rubber bumpers on the back so that if you have to set it in this position, you're not gonna scratch the back up. You hit your handle here, push the button, pull it up to one snap, and then the next. And now you've got a little two wheel cart version of the power supply, which makes it really easy. These plugs are pretty self-explanatory. They can only go one way, so you wanna make sure that you're actually using the ones that are designed for it. They go together and they click into place. Same thing here. This solar panel here is rated at 37.4 volts, 400 watts. Peak power is 400 watts, give or take 5%. Open circuit voltage is 45. Short circuit current is 11.45 amps. Maximum power voltage is 37. So there's some of your basic specs on it. On the back here, we've got a Velcroed leg, that's gonna help hold the unit up when it's up in the air. Obviously this ain't ideal, bringing it out here in the yard, but if you're out camping, it's gonna be pretty much the same scenario. They did a really nice job uh, with the clamps here so that you can keep it all together until you're ready for it. Just push the button, that unfastens that. And this is no real small solar cell. I mean, it's a total of five. This is the very first time I've done it. I just know that you wanna have it lined up at the sun. We're gonna set this thing up. 
All right, so we've got our meter here. We're gonna go ahead and check, see what our DC output is on the uh, solar cells. Okay, we're putting out 44.6 volts. All right, they made this pretty simple. You've got a rounded edge here, square edge there. Let's match it up, plug it in. We are charging, according to this, at 323 watts. We are now 338 watts. We'll turn on the AC power, which we've got it on. Coming down to our AC power, we're running 112 volts, 0.3. And far as frequency, we're right at 60.33. This is a clean wave uh, sine wave, pure wave sine wave, so it is running clean. It's gonna be safe for your electronics. This is what a cheaper power inverter looks like. This is the one that's in my truck. It's a square wave sine wave. It's not as clean a power. Even worse yet is the Milwaukee power top square wave here and if you look at the bottom the frequency is not even accurate and just to prove it's not a fluke off of the meter there and uh, I would say it's pretty accurate and here we are with the pure sine wave on the all powers so the frequency is correct uh, four tenths is not a big deal but the most important thing is, is the wave pattern there is nice clean now we can go to a faster sampling rate right here we're at five milliseconds a little bit lower you can see there's a little bit of a distortion there in the middle but my goodness, it's such a small amount. That's at two milliseconds. There's one millisecond. You can see a little bit of a ripple right there in the middle. Here we are plugged into the wall, perfectly clean. I'm looking for some heavy loads that we can run on this, because like I said, this is 3,600 watts continuous, 6,000 watt peak, and uh, we have a 30 amp plug here, which is perfect for a camper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adapt a plug and then feed it through my transfer switch built into my breaker box. And then I'm gonna run the house off of it. And we're gonna see how long this lasts. Like I said, you hit that push button there, it actually has spring load on it. So it does pop up, makes it easy to pull out. That's made out of what feels like aluminum. They've got some pretty good sized brackets here to help hold it. And they even have an extra bracket here in the back to help maintain any possible sagging or anything like that. This unit does weigh right at about 100 pounds. Like I said, I work on usually gas generators. So the solar thing is a little new to me, but what I really liked about this, and this is what was really awesome about All Powers, I said, hey, I want to run this with the solar panel because the battery backup's really awesome if you're wanting to be stealthy. Uh, say we have a power outage, say you're doing uh, prepping and you wanna be quiet. I have a quiet generator that I would be able to charge this. So if you didn't have the solar, say you're in the middle of winter, you obviously you don't wanna leave these things out in the weather nonstop. It's not made to be left out in the weather year round. It does have a leg there, I just didn't see it. Now I do have an amp meter, let's go grab that. We just zeroed it out there with the orange button and we clamp it. And right now we're coming in right at nine amps. We are running right at 43 volts. Kind of curious if you're just putting your hand over it. Look at that, just by putting my hand. This is how sensitive this is. So just putting my hand right there, look what the amp draw does. It dropped down to 7.4, just for my hand like that. That's over an amp of current I lost by just blocking that little bit there. It is very vital. I had no idea that it made that big of a difference. So P over IE, P is wattage, E is voltage, I is current. So we know the current and we know the voltage. So if we go and do the voltage, I believe, like I said, was 44 times the current times nine, 396. So to go by true charging here, we're right at that 400 watt mark. This is actually putting out the wattage that they rated it at. This is the All Powers R4000 model that we are working with here. Now the EV charging is capable of charging up to 2000 watts. The AC charging plus solar can do up to 4000 watts and EV plus solar charging can also do 4000 watts. Solar charge can be variants of between 12 and 150 volts with a 40 amp maximum coming into it and up to 2000 watts. Now this product does offer uninterruptible power supply. It's able to switch over in less than 15 milliseconds. So if you lose power, this will automatically switch to the battery backup and then continue to power the device that's plugged into it. Now, the thing I noticed different about this one here is you're actually being powered off the wall until it needs to pull it from the battery. That way you're not running the battery down, damaging your cells in the battery. From the way it appears, last time I did this, it fold, folded in on itself and folded back on itself. As long as you kind of do it back and forth like this, and then the last one comes around like that, there's your handle. So you're able to pick it up and move on down the road to your next adventure. I honestly believe this is gonna be the best thing to have. If you're really wanting to live off the grid, be prepped just in case, because you never know. You may not be able to get a hold of gasoline. It, it just really depends. You've gotta have multiple different backups, redundancy. 
Come around here to the back, push in, let it pop up. We do have our main breaker on. We have nothing connected to any of these. Now you can charge it with the EV port and this solar sail at the same time or plug it into the wall. There we go. We turned it on. All right, now we're charging at 313 watts. Now the solar panels do come with one of these cables, which the uh, solar generator did too. It also comes with a plug here, which plugs right into the panel and gives you two different plugs here on the end. So you can charge some of your portable devices like uh, other smaller portable power supplies and things like that. Now we are able to charge this with 120 volts while it's also charging with the solar panels. So let's go ahead and check our rate real quick. We're at 271 watts right now. It's dropping as the sun drops. Let's go ahead and plug this in. So you can see both of these running at the same time here. And this all depends on the mode that you're charging at. The mode that we're in right now, which we're in work mode, uh, we're in mute, which is the slowest. In mute mode, we're in the slowest. That's 522 watts off the grid, and we're doing 270 off the sun. Now, if we change that setting, now we go back into work mode and we take it up to standard mode and hit OK, go back to home. That's going to jump from 517 to around 1,021 watts. Now we go back in there one more time and we go into fast mode, hit OK, go back to home, and it's going to jump up a little higher. Now we're charging in at 1,540 watts off the utility and we're doing 270 watts off of the solar panels. Like I said, I'm not in a humongo hurry here, so we're just gonna go ahead and let it run in standard mode. Hit OK to confirm it. To turn voice on and off, you can go into there, turn on voice. OK, all powers. Hi, here I am. Now you can give her a command and have her do different things. So we've got a few commands here, which are kind of funny. So the first thing you do is you say, hello, all powers. Hi, here I am. And then if you wanna turn it on, you can say, output open. Output turned on. And it just turned it on. Bluetooth open. Bluetooth is turned on. Just turn on Bluetooth. Wi-Fi open. Wi-Fi is on. Beeps open. Beeps is on. But those are some of your uh, voice commands that they've got there. It's not what you would normally think. I don't know if it's really that needed myself personally. It's, it's, it's neat. I rather use the Wi-Fi because it gets you more of a range with uh, anywhere the Wi-Fi is at. Bluetooth's gonna be somewhere in the 30 foot range which uh, the, they got the same app for both. So you go to the All Powers app, which is, looks like a U up and U down. We do Bluetooth add. Step one, turn on the phone's Bluetooth, which it's on. After a short press of the Bluetooth button, turn on the screen. Long press again to enter the Bluetooth mode. I did not have much luck with this. I'm not really sure what the story is. I'm confused. It, it don't make sense. So if I go in there and clear out my notifications, and if I go into Bluetooth settings. Let's go into connections, go to Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth. I don't know if I see Samsung TV. Do not see the all powers on here. Yet the all powers is on. Now we can turn the DC off, turn the AC off, which AC may not turn off because we're charging. Here's your Bluetooth on, Bluetooth off. We can hold it. It says for a short press of the button. I can't get it to, to do anything. Voice on and off, Wi-Fi settings. Now the Wi-Fi was a lot easier. Choose your account you want to go in here in. I went with Google. Please agree to it. Yeah, read and agree down at the bottom. Hit Google. Okay. There's my Wi-Fi device right there. Click on it, it's offline. See, here's where your eco mode is. If you wanna turn it on, you can tell it to shut off anywhere from one, two, four, and six hours later. Um, I haven't got a need for that. I'm gonna be with it whenever I'm or using it. We're not connected to it right now, we're offline. So we've gotta get the Wi-Fi turned back on here. I think we've got an issue with the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, we need to connect, I have to enter password hit enter connect it should connect here connect there you just sort of click so now we come down here we should be connected it says offline we clicked on it yeah we're connect 
Connection status, connect. Instead of connected, it just says connect. There's just some translations here. Hit the home button. Now we're reading 17%. We have 17% there. We can look at it and see that we're charging at 1,275 watts, which uh, 1,275, that would be pretty much right on the money. 241 plus 1032. Uh, now it just went to two, uh, 238. You can see as the sun is continually going down that it's, it's basically losing the wattage. So you wanna charge this thing in the middle of the day uh, when the sun's brightest, not at, currently right now we're at 520. And like I said, we're in the middle of March and I'm in Ohio. So it's not gonna charge at the fastest rate today. I found the Wi-Fi to be really nice. Turn on the DC here, click it, boom, just came on. Turn it off, turns off. I can monitor this while it's setting down at the breaker box or whether it's out here in the garage. And uh, like I said, it's basics of what you need here. Uh, time remaining, remaining power, 18%. So it's charging. You can go in here, standard mode, mute mode, whatever rate you want. Say I just changed mute mode. It's dropping down to 500. Go back to standard mode and it just beeped and it's gonna go back up to 1,000. So yeah, you're able to see what's going on there. It's pretty simple. Uh, to use voice on, voice off. I don't think the voice is uh, needed. I'd rather use this. To me, if I'm close enough to talk to it, I'm just gonna hit the buttons and turn it on and off. So for giggles, I went ahead and stood them straight up and went ahead and just did some flip flop in there just to see if it make much of a difference. We're right at 176, so it did drop some. We're gonna go ahead and lay it flat to see what that does. I went ahead and laid them flat just to see what we get. We're at 31 watts, 32 watts. So it does make a huge difference how it is aimed at it. So that's what I wanted to show you is you're obviously not getting good contact with the sun that way. But that's just a quick demonstration of what the solar panels can do for you and why you may wanna have them depending on whether you want to rely only on plugging it in. So I have it out here in the garage hooked up to the house. What this plug does is it takes 120 volts, 30 amp circuit, and splits it between both legs on your breaker panel. So you're not gonna have 230 volts because this does not do 230 volts. They have some available, but this particular one here is 3,600 watts at 120 volts or 110, depending on what you wanna go off of. So what we're doing right now is we're powering the whole house. Currently we're doing 900 or 893 watts, 60 Hertz at 114 volts. Our temperature is 44 Celsius. This little Chinese button right here, that's the same as your home button. I think it's a mistake in the software. Uh, if you hit the 85% mark here, it shows you what your battery voltage is. We got 48.5. The power consumption, same as before, 893 watts. We've got 2.9 hours at my current wattage that's going on. And the tw uh, 20 Celsius is what my current uh, battery state is. Down here at the bottom, we've got our DC which we can go back to our front page. We can either turn on the DC and do that at the same time as the AC and do it right here, or you can just actually hit the button there and turn it on and off. This is the power button for the 120 volt section here. Work mode, this is uh, how you want it to charge. Fast mode, mute mode, or standard mode. Mute mode is gonna give you the longest, uh, it's gonna charge the slowest. Uh, that's gonna protect your battery from fast charging. Fast charging obviously wears the batteries out. Uh, we're in standard mode right now. You have the backlight. This is where you adjust your how bright you want it. So if you're in a tent or a camper or whatever, that's where you would turn that down so it's not too bright. So right now we're gonna go ahead and cook something in the microwave. All right, we got some lasagna here. The microwave is, this is an 1800 watt microwave. So there's the specs on it. All right, let's go ahead and put this in for 45 seconds and let's go outside. It just kicked on. The light didn't have a problem there. Let's go outside. All right, so that's kind of putting a load on it. You can see right now we're at, there the fan just kicked up. We're at 21, let's just say 2200 watts. At that type of uh, rate that we're doing, you've just dropped your time, run time down to 1.1 hours. So if you want to run something that big, it's going to eat up your power awfully quick. Uh, I would not say this is going to replace your generator for the house, but it would be good for a camper or a tent where you have some heavy loads. But far as being able to replace the generator, I don't think so. Not when you're losing it that quick. Now that should drop out here in a second soon as, yeah, the microwave must have shut off because we're down to 888 watts. 
Now, something you could do is you could run a generator like this one here to charge this. This is capable of 2,300 watts continuous, 3,000 watt peak. It is clean power. It's got about 2 to 3% distortion, and you would be able to run that to charge the box down here, and that way you wouldn't have to maintain, you know, the gas generator. You know, you get rid of the noise, things like that. So essentially, if the clouds were out, you weren't uh, getting the sunshine that you were hoping for, the power's still out, and you want to be able to charge it up, I would recommend maybe having a small generator like that to be able to uh, charge it up in the meantime. Uh, if it's at nighttime, you're not going to be drawing a whole lot of power. Depending on what it is, you're going to have potentially the gas furnace. Uh, you know, uh, if it's a heat pump, obviously it's not going to be able to run. It's 230 volt. For me, I have a well. My well's 230 volt. Uh, same thing with my water heater. It's also 230 volts. So unfortunately, this is not going to be able to run any of those things. Now, I have an 8,000 watt gas generator. It's able to do 230 volt. And if I stage things, I'm able to run each one of those individual components. But I don't need 8,000 watts all the time. So one thing that's nice about this device here is it's going to be able to run the small things like a CPAP, uh, you know, lighting, TV, little things just to keep things working. You don't always need a mega generator to do it. Something you can do with this is you can put multiples of these in parallel. Now this is a kind of a costly unit. Now one thing to keep in mind, I have a refrigerator in the house, a deep freeze here, I have another freezer over here, and I've got a small little refrigerator here. With so the wife just ran the microwave for her dinner stuff and we ran the fans up on a higher uh, speed. We're still at 1,025 watts so we must have one of the refrigerators running 66% so far. I'd say, we'll have to look at the playback, but I'd say it's probably about an hour and a half. Okay, now we want to go ahead and connect this to the Wi-Fi on the phone. So I've already connected it by entering the password into the device. We're going to go ahead and hit data. We're going to click on company. And when we click on company, all powers, up comes the QR code. We're going to scan that with the phone, and that should link them together. We just uh, had the power turn off on us. It is down to... 5%. The uh, unit ran for two and a half hours. So to put it simply, um, this would probably be great for a camper where you only have one or two things running. But far as running the whole house, I'm going to say probably not going to do it unless you are running bare bone minimums. Uh, it's big, it's powerful, it's capable of running it, no problem whatsoever. It can't replace a gas generator. That's just all there is to it. Now, granted, you can run six of these in parallel. Uh, from everything I'm seeing, everything, they seem to be really truthful with it. This is UL rated according to the book. It has it also on some of the plugs they've got there. And uh, so far, everything I see build quality wise seems to be very well built. We're currently at 72%. We're running right at a load of 1,218 watts. If we hit our battery icon there it shows us our voltage of the actual battery is right at 48 volts our power consumption is 1200 watts the uh, state of charge is 71 percent we have 1.8 hours left and the temperature is running at 20 celsius this little chinese writing right there is basically the back button or the home button i did speak to the factory and they said they're going to correct that in a firmware update but it's basically your home button taking you back what we're connected to right now is the 1200 watt Honeywell and it's been running non-stop so we are running that until we run this thing down we're going to see that if it comes out to the calculated two hours and a half that they put it at so we've got two hours and ten minutes out of this thing and it finally just shut down yeah so we're actually doing a live stream with these guys but yeah it just shut off two hours ten minutes five percent left over and we ran a 1200 watt heater down there all right guys hopefully you enjoyed the video and you found it informative in my opinion this is a really nice device it has clean power it has a lot of capacity depending on how much load you're going to be pulling is going to determine on whether or not this is going to be the right device for you or not when i ran this on the whole house House, I ran it without any concern of trying to conserve power. If I would have used a strategy of power management, it would have lasted a lot longer. I think it's a great unit. I think it's uh, got sustainable energy. It would be great under the right circumstances. Uh, if there is a power outage, it's going to last for a long duration and no gas is available. Like I said, if you're in an apartment complex where you can't run a generator, or if you're somewhere where you need to be quiet, whether it be a housing authority, whatever the case, there's a lot of different scenarios and only you know that scenario. After 3,500 cycles, this still retains 80% of its battery life, which calculates out to being about 10 years, being used every day. I think it's something definitely worth considering. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.